Good afternoon, Easton. I am Carrie Rapolo. I'm Jason Daniels. And this is the Shoveltown Scoop, Easton's news program brought to you by ECAT. So here's the scoop for July 15, 2015. The Easton School nurses are going to be equipped with a life saving opiate antidote. The four school committee members present voted unanimous, unanimously at the last meeting to allow these nurses to carry the overdose reversing drug naloxone, known as Narcan. Narcan prevents or reverses the effects of opioids, including respiratory depression, sedation, and hypotension, and it will help reverse the effects of an overdose. Uh, the school department's budget was already passed by the town meeting a couple of months ago. Superintendent Andrew Keogh said that they will have to buy Narcan using existing funds. The preferable method would be through the nursing supplies budget if there is enough extra money, Keogh said. So I think this is a very important thing that is going to be in our schools. It's an unfortunate thing that we need, but I think it is uh, just an extra step of precaution. You just never know when you're going to need it, and it could save a life in the case of an overdose. And the, yeah, and there's some more information coming up on this, right? There is, yeah. So we have a clip from the school meeting, school committee meeting, which was July 9th, and here are some of the nurses speaking about the need for Narcan in the schools. Our schools can be kept in our emergency bag, just as our emergency epinephrine is. Um, and the question came up was, well, gee, why would you need it in an elementary school? Parents, um, you know, we're young parents have young children. We would want to be ready for any situation like that. So it really is a, something that we're looking at community-based as well as um, for us students. So if you want to watch that in its entirety, you can go to our website, which is eastoncat.org, and uh, it tells the whole story of why we need it, why it's necessary, and unfortunately, it's uh, a reality that's happening here um, across Massachusetts and in Easton. So. Right. And um, speaking of that, um, Easton has a uh, nice support group here called the Easton Wings of Hope. You can find them on Facebook. And uh, they always post things on uh, opioid overdose prevention and educa education classes. And there's one coming up on Wednesday, July 22nd at 6 p.m. in Foxborough at the Universalist Unitarian Church, and that's on Bird Street. Again, if you want to follow Easton Wings of Hope, you can go to Facebook.com and search for them on there. And they are a wealth of knowledge. Yeah, it's a, it's a very fairly new organization. It right is. Now. Yeah, um, but but a very important one. It is, and we've had Kristen on the show, and she's very passionate about educating our community and uh, helping out and educating everybody that you know um, doesn't know enough about this yet because it is fairly new, I think, to the the Commonwealth. Okay, so coming up at the town hall today is the library board of directors uh, meeting. They're going to be over at the Quesit House on Fifty One Main Street, and then coming up next week on Monday the twentieth is the Planning and Zoning Board. You can always check out their agendas if you go to easton.ma.us to see what they will be talking about. And uh, we have a picture here. This is from the Board of Selectmen meeting on July 13th. This is Police Chief Gary Sullivan being sworn in. If you'd like to watch the video, you can go to eastoncat.org and watch a clip of that. So congratulations to him. Absolutely. And another thing that happened at the Board of Selectmen meetings this is about 19 minutes in on our website. Gary Anderson, who is the planning director, and Greg Strange, the chairman of the Planning and Zoning Board, were addressing some of the parking concerns for the northeastern area. Um, a partnership between the businesses and shared parking are going to need to be worked out, but they do anticipate a successful solution. They're talking to the Roman Catholic Church, the Oak Sames Memorial Hall, and some mun municipal parking um, as options for the growing uh, part of Main Street there. So they're working on it. Yep. And um, also, Easton just became a Purple Heart community, and uh, so we have a little clip here from the Board of Selectmen meeting, um, the proclamation of that. Right, this is Sue Ann Tom. Sue Ann Tom. Whereas the people of the town of Easton have great admiration and the utmost gratitude for all the men and women who have selflessly served their country and this community in the armed forces for the good of all, and whereas contributions and sacrifices of the men and women from Easton who served in harm's way in the armed forces have been vital in maintaining the freedom and the way of life enjoyed by our citizens, and whereas citizens of our community have been killed in action while serving in the armed forces and have been posthumously awarded the Purple Heart for their ultimate sacrifice, and whereas citizens of our community have been awarded the Purple Heart for their bodily sacrifice 
of being wounded in action while engaged in combat. And whereas the Purple Heart is the oldest American military decoration in present use and was created as the badge of military merit on August 7, 1782 in Newburgh, New York by General George Washington. Initially, it was made of purple cloth, shaped as a heart with the word merit sewn upon it. And whereas the heritage it represents is sacred to those who know the price paid to wear the Purple Heart. And whereas August 7th is nationally recognized as Purple Heart Appreciation Day. And now, therefore, it be proclaimed, we the Easton Select Board, on behalf of the town of Easton, go on record to hereby proclaim Easton, Massachusetts, a Purple Heart town, honoring the service and sacrifice of our nation's men and women un in uniform that were wounded or killed by the enemy while serving to protect the freedoms enjoyed by all Americans. Also be it proclaimed, we the town of Easton will recognize August 7th annually as Purple Heart Day and urge the people and organizations of Easton to display the American flag as well as other public expressions of recognition of our Purple Heart recipients. All right, so August 7th is Purple Heart Day. Yeah, so yeah. thanks for including that. I think it was yeah. a really important, uh, yeah. important clip there. That's nice. Okay, and then uh, the Board of Selectmen and I had a very busy meeting on the 13th. So uh, here's Hazel Varela and Lee Williams, just a little snapshot of them, talking about a clock that's going to be coming to Main Street. They left it a little bit of a mystery as to where it's going to be placed, but there's going to be one coming in, and it's being designed and worked on now. And um, Lee did say that the hands on the clock are going to resemble shovels, so very uh, cool. fitting All for right. Go. For the shovel town. Go figure. All right. Yeah. All right. So there it is. Oh, is it coming? I have a picture here. Yeah, just a picture of a clock. Not the clock. They, we can't reveal that yet. All right. And some ongoing paving information here. Uh, portions of Main Street will include the section from Barrow Street to Canton Street um, and the area immediately adjacent to Washington Street. So as you know, they are currently working on those areas to improve the roadways. So seek alternate routes and uh, they should be finished up fairly soon, um, depending on the weather. But, you know, just just be cautious of what's going on down there. Yeah, drive slow. Yeah, that's <laughs> the busy intersection of 138 um, and Main Street. All right, back to the school committee again. Yeah, so the school committee meeting, we were the superintendent was talking about, Andrew Keogh was talking about the need for a budget subcommittee meeting to happen over the summer, which will be regarding the budget for fiscal year 2017 and the potential for a two and a half proposition override, um, a question that will be needed to be added to the ballot for the 2016 town hall meeting. So here he's just talking to the school committee about the needs of that budget subcommittee meeting. Okay you what we're not able to fund mm -hmm. with our existing funds and I tried to do that at town meeting I think I, we did a pretty compelling job of pointing out that to bring the school budget into alignment to be on the average for the state per pupil expenditure we would need to infuse our budget with nine million dollars almost ten almost ten so I can say that that's a fact that's not lobbying one way or the other. That's informing the public of the facts. Um, I think the school committee is in a different role. We are allowed to advocate. Absolutely. We absolutely can. Yep. The school board. committee has a completely different yep. position. And um, so I'm, I'm certainly willing to attend any meetings where people need that information. Uh, I do feel as if um, we have some challenging times ahead if we want to institute things like full day kindergarten um, or just for a start and you, you know there was a long list uh, but things like that uh, will be difficult to attain uh, on three to four percent budget increases yeah, absolutely all right so there are the facts uh Maybe a budget subcommittee meeting might be coming up, and um, we'll stay on top of that and inform the community uh, on any more information. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Full, this full video again on eastoncat.org. So if people are talking about it on Facebook or yeah. on eastonmass.com and they want to watch the whole video, they can do that <laughs> too. Absolutely. And uh, just get this. There's get a lot of information yeah. in there. All right. <laughs> Okay, and this is from the patch.com that Easton was just awarded um, a grant 
funding clean energy projects. The grant will provide funding for numerous clean energy and sustainability projects, including high efficiency lighting, installation of insulation and energy management systems at municipal buildings and facilities, LED street lights, oil to gas heating system conversions, and more. Uh, the projects are estimated to result in an annual savings of more than $2 million, or the equivalent of the annual consumption of nearly 550 Massachusetts homes, and greenhouse gas reductions equal to removing more than 1,100 cars from the road, according to the release. All right. So congratulations to Easton for that. And then just past weekend here um, at the Smith Farm, they had the Smith Farm aid on July 11th. Here's a little sound check video and some pictures for you. Looks like they had a good turnout. Yeah, 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 very, very, very. Um, from what I heard, also a great, great yeah. grassroots community event there. That's good. Okay. Good weather too, thank God. Yes. Yeah. Not this oppressive humidity. <laughs> <this week. laughs> I know. So speaking of some more really cool musical things, uh, Easton resident Brian Hartman got to get uh, on stage and play with Bono and U2 at the TD Garden on July 11th. If you'd like to watch the video, it is up on YouTube. You can search for U2 Angel of Harlem, Bono Gives Kid Guitar at the Boston Garden, Boston Mass, July 11, 2015. And uh, he nailed it. He did a great job. And the guitar he's holding, they gave to him. So he was actually able oh, to take cool that. Oh, how cool is that? Home. Wow. Uh, yeah, the kid probably has not slept since the concert. Wow. So I guess his family, his father in particular, is a huge Bono fan, a huge U2 fan. Uh, they sat in the front row, and Brian held up a sign that said, I play guitar. So I guess Bono is known to pull fans up uh, from the audience that have some musical talents. And Easton resident Brian got to get up there and play nice. with them. Way to go, Brian. Yeah, it was so cool. Talented kid. Yep. All right, announcement from the Easton Garden Club. This is kind of hard to like think about the snow and the winter and the holiday season, but uh, this is always a fun event. It's the Festival of Trees. Mark your calendars. It's the fifth annual one. It's going to be from November 28th through the 13th of December. Right, and and right now we're, they're looking for sponsorship. They really, are. For business sponsorship. So if, if you are interested, you can reach out to Nancy and uh, – yeah. With, the, with the contact information here and, uh, you know, sponsor, uh, sponsor tree. Sponsor tree, advertising in their program booklet, all modes of um, advertising are welcome. Okay. It's hard to oh. believe with the nice days that we have ahead of us here. Right. <laughs> All right, All so right. the Children's so Museum some is... things happening a little closer. A little yeah. Little. <laughs> <laughs> so the Children's Museum's got a lot going on this week. Uh, tomorrow, Thursday, July 16th, they're having their petting zoo come from 11 to 2. Uh, Friday is going to be their free fun Friday event, and that is sponsored by the Highland Street Foundation. Uh, Monday, they're going to be doing Ode to the Yo-Yo, and then Tuesday is Pirate Day, so you can dress like a pirate. Oh, finally, I have a reason. <laughs> I, I do. Right. All right. <laughs> All right. Okay. And, and over at the some, library. Yeah, other, other kids' things at the, at the library here, right? Yeah, they, they're running a summer library program, and everything is held at the Cuisic Garden outside. If it does rain, they move it into the Oak Ames Hall. But on Monday, July 20th, is Vic and the Sticks. It's a husband and wife team bringing songs from the comic side of life. This is a great event. It's usually held at night around 6 or 6.30 out there at the Cuisic Garden. So you can bring a blanket, um, some snacks for the kids, and just enjoy the show. All right. Yeah. So the children's races are on. They start this week, July 16th, at Frothingham Park. They are ran by gender and by age. It's a really cute event. Every kid gets a ribbon and a popsicle after they run. Run nice. their little hearts out. There you go. Until they fall asleep. <laughs> All right. And news from the Easton Children's Theater. Um, they're going to be presenting a uh, production called Crazy Camp. Friday, July 24th, and Saturday, July 25th, both at 7 p.m. at the Easton Middle School. Crazy Camp is all about uh, beautiful Lake Looky Lou and Camp Pocahontas. And on the other side is Camp John Smith, inhabited by a wild bunch of unruly males. So 
go ahead and check out the Easton Children's Theater. If you need more information, right. their website's listed there. Oh, cool. It's a family event. You know, yeah. Bring the no, kids. I, you know, they do a great job, and, and their programs, they submit them, and, and these plays will air on the channel yeah. um, in a few months. But usually these events are pretty well attended, too, so uh, yeah. great, great, Very great affordable program they too. do over there. Yeah. Okay. All right, then, so um, we've got oh. the 2015 film sprints are rolling in. Uh -huh. There's a couple snapshots we've got from some of the mm. uh, entrants. Yeah, entrants we have uh, yeah, Anika Prasad, who, who uh, gathered a team together here in the lower right corner. One of our all-star volunteers from yeah. the middle school submitted a film in the 48-hour challenge. Um, and then, of course, we have uh, Team Potash. Uh, <laughs> here on the lower left corner and uh in the middle we have i think it was a team championed by uh robert capitalupo and okay. so um you can check out these films in their entirety sunday night at nine o'clock nice okay um parental uh <laughs> guidance uh suggested, suggested <laughs> there we're gonna put a pg-13 <laughs> rating on on the videos uh, mm -hmm. Just in case anybody's staying up super late to to watch these, okay. uh, but uh, congratulations to all the teams that participated. Yeah, Thanks. that's great. Yeah, and of course we have Ross Moscato back from uh, vacation from last week or something. So now we have Moscato's musings. All right. Hi, I'm Ross Moscato. Several years ago, one day when I was down in the northeastern village district, and standing along the path of the Quis River, which was flowing in my direction. Ahead of me on the edge of the river, raised up maybe three feet from the water, perched an otter, a beautiful chocolate brown otter. It was gorgeous. Well, this otter commences to dive into the river. And then underwater and easily visible to me, it glided with a beautiful and elegant and economical and symphonic motion toward and past me. It was a moment. The other day, I was just east of Washington Street, Route 138, near Stonehill College, as I looked into the woods, I saw peering back at me an adult deer. It didn't seem skittish. It was perhaps 30 yards from me, and it appeared to be evaluating, studying me. After 20 seconds or so, it moved a little to its left, and I walked to my right to continue to hold my sight on the animal. Alas, it made a sort of combination hiss-grunt noise, and it bounded deeper into the woods. Interactions with wildlife can be special. I have bemoaned in this forum that society is losing its relationship with and understanding of nature. Losing a relationship with nature also means losing a relationship with wildlife. Too many of us don't appreciate and value the animals, critters, creatures among us, and what they can do for our spirit and maybe even teach us. Native Americans, the first people of the land, are best able and have the keenest sense of a, the importance of the wildlife of the land we all inhabit here. Fundamental to the spirituality of Native American tribes and nations are what are called totem animals. From a website titled Legends of America, I found a section on totem animals. Here is an excerpt from the site, quote, Native beliefs explain that a totem animal is one that is with you for life, both in the physical and spiritual world. Though people may identify with different animal guides throughout their lifetimes, it is this one totem animal that acts as the main guardian spirit, end quote. So as explained, Native peoples believe that for certain people, certain animals are something of a kindred spirit, a twin soul. I suspect they also could be a way of loved ones connecting. To continue with this thought, my father, for many years, was a teacher and coach and athletic director at Oliver Ames High School here in Easton. The Oliver Ames mascot is the tiger, and the school colors are orange and black. Now think orange and black. In the few years after my father passed away, my sister and her husband noticed the unusually high prevalence and frequency of the monarch butterfly in their lives. Yes, the monarch butterfly, it with its splendid wash paint and suit of orange and black. Native Americans believed in the special totem animal for the individual. As well, Native Americans understood that different animals held and offered general characteristics and meanings and lessons. Here are examples. The deer, compassion, peace, gracefulness, and femininity. The butterfly, transformation and ability and openness to accept change. The beaver, productivity, persistence, use of resources, and teamwork. The fox, 
cleverness, cunning, intelligence, and observation, the otter. Importance of appreciating the natural flows and ebbs and tides of life. Qualities and meanings and lessons of specific animals are fundamental to and inextricably intertwined with the relationship of a person and that person's totem animal. Do you have a totem animal? What does it mean to you? What can it teach you? How can it inspire you? Easton has a diverse and deep trove of wildlife. Perhaps your totem animal has been revealed or will be revealed to you here. An animal totem can be there for all of us. Be aware. Be open to the possibility. Thank you for watching. I love it. Wow. I love that one, Ross. That's pretty, that's pretty deep. I yeah, like it's that. pretty deep. You know, they say when you see a red cardinal um, that that's supposedly a uh, spirit of somebody that has passed trying to contact you or remind you that they're around you. So I thought that was kind of cool. Hmm. Yeah, there's like a whole website dedicated to cardinals and what they, the meaning is for the afterlife. So we'll have to find out what our totem animal is. Right, right. <laughs> Field trip. All right. All right. <laughs> Thanks, Easton. Good night. <laughs>